Today is a huge honor as Hot Living Magazine and Hot Time is sitting with the CEO of one of our favorite watch brands and luxury brands in the world, Audemars Piguet. Um, we're right now at the Armory, which is one of the best places in New York for a very special birthday. It's the 40th birthday for the Royal Oak. First of all, uh, thank you for sitting down with us. And tell us a little about this week, um, what Audemars Piguet is doing at the Armory and a little about the festivities that's going on. All right, so we, with this event, we're kicking off a series of similar events covering all major regions. And that will bring us up to the end uh, of this year. Um, it's a, a very exciting story that we have to tell. The story of the Royal Oak, uh, which when it started uh, was called an avant-garde watch, but at the end, if you really look at it, it was a rebel that was challenging um, all conventional wisdom in the market at the time of haute horlogerie. And uh, I think with the courage that we had to do that, with the strong initial concept of this watch, with our perseverance, with our um, smart innovation and communication, we got to this point that we are today. But of course, it is also responsibility to make this legacy evolve even more. So we see this event as, um, how would I call it, a milestone in well, that's, the young that's, history of this watch. Well, that's special because you know now to have the watch basically be viewed. I mean, 40 years, year in and year out basically continuing to evolve itself and be successful and to continue to have people want to buy the watch today. I mean, tell us about, you know, as the CEO, how powerful for luxury. It's like you look at the Birkin bag, you look at some products that year in and year out don't have to keep, you know, inventing itself. It's a classic. Tell us a little about how it makes you feel to be yeah, involved, involved with this. It is in the genes of this product, of this watch, that uh, this uh, rebellious nature of this product and the extraordinary nature of this product is in the gene, so you will never be able to, to change that. And um, I think it has climbed uh, an extra orbit. It's not just an unusual watch, an unusual collection. I think it becomes more and more, in a way, a cultural object uh, that would deserve a merit to, to be considered in a category of objects of design and, and luxury products uh, at par. Uh, from from the rest. Well, another thing, uh, let's talk a little about the brand itself, Audemars Piguet, since you are the CEO. It's been an independent family business uh, since 1875 with a huge, um, strong values of tradition, excellence, and audacity. Tell us about how this has ensured long-term stability and has continued to allow the brand to grow as one of the most powerful watch brands in the world. I think the family uh, model, uh, the family model, the family enterprise model is uh, a very interesting one. Uh, in our industry, I'm convinced in the auto lottery segment that we are in, you need stability, you need time, you need to give yourself um, enough energy and means to create exceptional ideas and to have them evolve. Uh, you need to find the right people and all this is guaranteed in, in a setting such as ours where we have, are a family business which ensures long-term stability. Uh, it has been very fruitful for us as a company. Of course, we have shareholders that are not only involved equity-wise, I think they're emotionally invested in the company and that's a big advantage as I see it. One of the interesting things about you is you came into the company at 2008, 2009. That was really the bull market, um, the end of the bull market when things, everything was on fire and then you came in when the market crashed. One of the most remarkable things is, is when the market crashed, Audemars didn't stop spending money. They continued to um, grow the brand, partner up with celebrities in golf, uh, basketball, tennis, uh, and so forth. Tell us a little about the mindset from when you came in and how you spearheaded and guided the company to where it's at now and you know things are good and everything's uh, ro rosy and so forth. I think when, when a crisis comes up, uh, this company which it's doing the, its activity since the last 137 years. Uh, it will not become desperate. It knows that it has a strong position and uh, we have to look even at the post-crisis more than we have to look at the crisis. Of course, we had to adjust certain parameters, but it was very clear that we wanted and needed to come out stronger than before. That is always our objective. So um, it's very clear that you have to invest in an anti-cyclical way even if uh, everybody is telling you be careful and uh, it's not the right moment, go ahead, have your long-term vision in mind and nothing else. As the CEO, what are some accomplishments that you're most proud of for the last couple of years since you've been at the helm? 
I think uh, this company, which has taken a certain size and a certain dimension and complexity, has become uh, much more a unit and is working with one common philosophy and uh, common methods and standards. And I think the strategy is clearly in, in the mind of most people and therefore also the values in this company. And I think that's the most important to inject this energy and sense of direction in an aligned way in a big organization. And tell us a little about, um, you just finished off about a month ago, the SIHH show in, in uh, Switzerland. How has the response uh, been on an international level? Um, where's a lot of the buyers coming from? Tell us a little about the state of the um, watch industry. I think it has been a, a very successful SIHH. I think it was, of course, um, centered around the theme of the 40 years anniversary of the Royal Oak. Therefore, very, a lot of people appreciated that uh, theme a lot. Uh, the feedback was very, very good. The orders were good. The people liked the new products and the attendance is, as usual, international. One of the most um, watches that got the most response was the Extra Thin Royal uh, Oak Limited Edition. Tell us a little about how special of a watch that was. This is a very special watch. It's a tourbillon, an extra flat tourbillon uh, with an open work with a skeleton movement. And um, this movement has over 100 entering angles, which is uh, the clear proof that this is a handmade uh, decoration from A to Z, and therefore a very, very special artistic object, one of the messages we would like to give the brand. Last year, Audemars Piguet um, launched an extra thin watch, the Jules Audemars. Tell us, you know, it's been about a year to 18 months. How's the response been on that watch piece? The, uh, I think this new collection has been received very well. Uh, we are still in the, in the phase of rolling out all the references, particularly the perpetual calendar is, is a very big success. Excellent. And then a couple of quick questions to finish it off. Um, what watch do you wear daily of the Audemars? I, I see you wearing this watch. Tell us a little about this watch. This, this is, is one of my fa It's actually on the um, website of the whole time. It's the time clock. This is one of my favorite watches on the market. Tell exactly. us. Exactly. I wear um, the concept watch, the mm -hmm. Royal Oak concept watch. It's a collection that was created 10 years ago for the 30th anniversary. This is now the third edition that we have. It's a very beautiful piece. It's a tourbillon with a GMT. Look at how that tourbillon engine just moves. Yeah, exactly. You have a see-through effect, which is absolutely amazing. You is have this the watch you wear daily? Uh, I wear it for, particularly for this year and all the events. Nice. And then um, a couple of more questions is for movement, what's, what watch are you most proud of that Audemars produces right now? I think still the original Royal Oak, the uh, reference 15202 with the extra flat automatic movement is still a, an absolutely amazing watch. I like of course everything that is related to perpetual calendars and equation, time equation, equation du temps, which is also a specialty of uh, the old Van Piguet and all the grand complications. And if one of your friends came up to you and said, look, um, money's not a concern, what, what watch is most po you know what watch would you recommend if someone was going to buy one special piece? Obviously, there's lots. Money wasn't a concern. What would you recommend? Or you could recommend two. I would recommend him two. I would say go for the Chronop, the Julodmar chronometer movement, which has this high frequency movement um, and came out again this year in a new version, which is absolutely amazing. But on on top of that, or aside to that, he has to have the classical Royal Oak. That's very clear. And then one quick question, do you uh, have an iPhone or a Blackberry? Which, 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 which one do we you use? a Blackberry because that's company policy. Excellent. Well, Mr. Um, Merck, I really appreciate the opportunity of sitting down. Um, Audemars is a special brand and Boat Living is so excited to be able to finally get to meet you and spend this evening with you as a uh, happy birthday. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure talking with you. <laughs>